Pamela Geller joins the show right now. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me, Faith. Well, Pamela, I know that you followed a little bit of the Rebels coverage down in Ohio. I know that you, uh, on your own website, have been focusing on some of the niche parts of uh, and the interesting things to come out of Ohio State's uh, terrorist attack. I just want to ask you, in a broad sense, does anything uh, either from the terrorist attack or the fallout where we are right now shock you? What's been your reaction? Well, I'm sorry to say I'm not shocked. The scrubbing, the censoring, the whitewashing, after every jihad attack, the mainstream media inundates us with these stories about Muslims fearing quote-unquote backlash. And this is to create the impression that Muslims are the true victims. This is how the Islamic State, I mean the Islamic State, the Ohio State University has been reacting. Um, as you know, its diversity officer urged compassion for the would-be jihad murderer. And the writer of a, an article that was done on this student on his first day of school, once again, here we go, reflecting the kind of outreach that the left and academia insists that we extend to um, migrants and uh, Muslim migrants and so forth, did an interview in the, in the Lantern, and he had written a piece that was today in the Washington Post. And it was so telling, Faith, because in this piece, the student, and I'm going to quote directly, says, I wished the whole day was a dream. I wished a gray Honda sedan had never drove over a curb. I wished it hadn't struck a group of people before being lunged at with a knife. I wished the sirens I heard on my walk to class were phantom. This is busting the liberals' bubble. He wished. He wished. Well, there's wishing and there's reality. And I have seen nothing that would connect reality in the post-jihad of Ohio State. You were at the school. Yeah, absolutely. You know and and you, know the, you know what the problem is, is that right now in schools, they're teaching constructivism and these, you know, ethereal, lofty thoughts, as opposed to focusing on realism and reality and the fact that the Islamic State just had a, a claimed a soldier has attacked your own backyard and you can't figure that out. You're 100% right, Pamela. I was there. I was where that gray Honda sedan drove up to. And there wasn't one bloody clue that anything had happened. There was no caution tape. There were no police there even patrolling and giving a little extra extra, you know, security. Um, there, there was not even a media satellite truck. There wasn't even a, a media handheld person walking around. Uh, it was as though nothing no, had there, happened. There were no teddy, there were no teddy bears and Ohio There was one poinsettia. There was one poinsettia. That was it. And actually, I'll tell you one thing, Pamela. I've covered radical jihad now in my journalistic uh, career basically since, since its inception. And the, the last uh, event that I um, covered was in Orlando, um, Omar Mateen's uh, massacre uh, in a gay nightclub there. At least there, they tried to spin the story, and there were people on the ground talking about peace, love, unity, and respect, and, you know, broad brush homophobia. Here, there was a complete acid wash. No one was on the ground. There was maybe some folks in armchairs far away saying, well, maybe this is what happened. But uh, what's your sense? Are, are the media, the government, the teachers, the students doing this out of respect for religion? Or are they fearful? Have they been brainwashed? What, what, what's going on here? I think the left has always aligned with the totalitarian ideology of the day. A hundred years ago, it was uh, communism or the National Socialist Workers' Party, which was Nazism, which was socialism. I mean, they love control. And there's no better system of governance of control than the Sharia. Of course, the children. And, and here, this is what's so striking to me. They're targeting our children in school. And still... You're providing cover. You're denying the fact that the media doesn't tell the public and the teachers, the professors at the school. And I'm sure you, when you spoke to the, 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 the kids and the professors on campus, nobody was aware of the, of the perpetrator's declaration by Allah. I am willing to kill a billion infidels. It was all about jihad, which is why you saw a complete dispersal of the media. If this was Aurora or this was Newtown or he, if he wasn't. Muslim, you would have seen media camped out trying to tie him to some Tea Party group or some Trump supporting group or so on and so forth. But the fact that it is jihad, that it is the, the world's largest threat to freedom, you're, you're going to see a complete absence of any coverage, any accurate coverage, and they're going to scrub it.